I am Mark Donovan, Director of Commercial Applications for Audio-Technica US, here today to talk about System 20 Pro. System 20 Pro is the successor to our System 10 Pro, which has been out for a little more than a decade. And it's been very successful out in the market, and not only in live applications, but also in commercial applications. Um, this is a, a digital wireless system that operates in the Wi-Fi zone, so it's in that 2.4 gigahertz. And I know that makes some people a little bit nervous, but the way that we've done this, the way that we are able to operate in that, we can actually move around all of the other interferences in there, which makes it an extremely stable system, even though it's in that Wi-Fi range. And in the future, we are going to do a video talking about just why that is. But I do want to touch on one of the reasons that really uh, helps us succeed in that. And that actually has to do with the antennas themselves. So when you're talking about a traditional UHF wireless, you're typically putting antennas on the end of an RF cable. And that's how you solve that problem. That's how you solve that application. But it's a little bit different when you start talking about the antennas on a device that's working in higher frequencies. So here with the 2.4 gigahertz device, the antennas are smaller. The cable is much more fine. There's actually a lot more loss plus the cable is a lot more expensive, and that makes it very difficult to remote mount them. But what our engineers did is they were able to put all of the electronics, all of the transmit and receive electronics, inside of a fairly small package that you can remotely mount. So now I've got a category uh, connector on the back of this and on the receive chassis, so I can put 100 meters between this transmit receive module and the rack where this receiver is located. So that's actually made it easy for us to get the antennas into the space where they need to be. So this is the receiver unit for System 20 Pro. It is a two-channel or a four-channel receiver. Now, the reason I say or is because there's two different modes. There's a standard density mode and there's a high density mode. So the standard density mode is going to give us a 10-channel maximum, while the high density mode gives us a 20-channel maximum. Now, the difference between those actually has nothing to do with audio quality. So your audio quality is going to be very high no matter which mode you're in. You're going to have 24-bit uh, sampling, 48 kilohertz. So you're going to have your full audio bandwidth on that either, either way you go. But the standard density is going to have a lower latency. It's going to come in at about 2.8 milliseconds. So that's a very low latency. Certainly makes this system suitable for performance, live bands, uh, whatever you might need to do for a live performance, you can absolutely do that. It's got the sound quality and the latency. Now, in order to get more channels to get up to that 20 channel maximum, it is going to be a little bit longer latency. That's really the only difference. And that latency is going to come in at 6.7 milliseconds. Now, at 6.7 milliseconds, it may be a little bit too long for some performance things. Maybe not for spoken voice type of things like plays and things like that. But for certainly for singing and things like that, it's, it's probably going to be a little bit too long. But that's actually well less than a frame of video. So when you're talking about commercial applications such as a city council or uh, education, distance learning, things like that, that latency is going to be a complete non-issue. So you'll be able to get to a full 20 channel capacity there. Now when it comes to the system here, we actually have a lot of different options laid out here on the table and I want to kind of go through that. And first I want to talk about the transmitter. So um, obviously, of course, we're going to have a handheld transmitter. And so what we have here is a handheld with a dynamic cardioid element on it. Uh, it's actually got a nice slide switch here on the side for mute. Um, it's got charging contacts in the bottom, so you can actually drop this in a charger. Now, the batteries that we've chosen for this, they are AA formats. So you can use alkaline AA formats on this, which for this handheld transmitter can actually get you 18 hours of battery life. Or you can actually put nickel metal high drive batteries in to use them with our charging system, so that all you would have to do is just simply drop it in the charger, and it's going to recharge those nickel metal high drive batteries. And the next transmitter we have is our belt pack transmitter. Again, this is one that you would expect to have. This is a, a body pack transmitter, um, also using that same AA format, a little bit shorter battery life on these, but it's still 15 hours, which is pretty impressive. So 15 hour battery life, it's got on here our CW connector. Now our CW connector actually can connect to any one of our other types of microphones, like this one right here I have, for example, is an omnidirectional lapel mic, but you can also to use any of our headset mics, any of our 
uh, external mics you can use on this and use it uh, uh, you know for performance like I said if you wanted to do a play or something like that but certainly for presentations also has a nice mute switch here uh, that allows you to mute and unmute it to something that's very tactile something you can feel now obviously those two transmitters are something that you could use for performance if you wanted to like we talked about in the standard density mode and the other two transmitters we have are ones that you would more typically see in a commercial application so here I have our boundary microphone so this is a condenser element in here cardioid condenser element boundary microphone it's a nice heavy base in here metal base so it's a very solid piece it's got a nice capacitive touch switch right here on top and so that's uh, going to give you a good clear indication of mute and unmute with a nice bright uh, red and green LEDs and you also have an LED on the very back there so that even people across the table from you or across the room from you can clearly see what the status of that microphone is um, as far as recharging goes, we have a USB-C connector on here. So it's a real simple, basically phone charger kind of thing where you're going to recharge this. Um, 12 hours is what you can get out of a battery life on this one. And the last transmitter is actually the XLR base right here. And this is used for goosenecks. So it, it looks very similar, has the same footprint as the boundary. It's got that same capacitive touch switch and the LED that you can clearly see in the back. It's got that same USB-C connector. And the difference, like I said, is you've got an XLR connector so that you could use you know, any one of our goosenecks. So like, for example, this is our 24 inch engineered sound gooseneck that you could absolutely use in there. And we've got all those different length options and capsule options and engineered sound. You can also use our Unipoint. In fact, this XLR, this transmitter here, actually provides 24 volts of phantom power. So if you've got a gooseneck microphone that can operate off 24 volts phantom power, you can run it on this. So that's an overview of System 20 Pro. Uh, like I said, in future videos, we're going to get into a little bit more detail to kind of tease on that. We're going to talk a little bit about more about why it's so successful in the 2.4 gig. There's some DSP built into this, some EQ compression, even some mixing built in that we're going to go over. Uh, and we'll talk about more about how you can be successful with System 20 Pro. Thank you.